All right, all right, all right. Let's get it going. So, in this video, we're going to dive into my 2024 predictions for what's going to happen in the great, glorious, beautiful United States of America. Now, on the surface, it seems political, right? But I believe there's a much deeper situation going on in our country. All the way down to the spiritual root. Is we're at this place where we're at a crossroads in the United States. And we're either going one way or the other. And it seems like 2024 is uh, the launching point for which direction we end up heading in the long run. Who knows? Obviously, this is all just speculation. So, here we go. Let's do it, man. What I'm going to do is, you know what I mean? I don't want to have like this super long drawn out video and then ultimately be like, so here's what I think is going to happen. I'm going to bust it out real quick. I'm going to say this is my prediction and then I'll go into some details and other talking points that I feel like support my prediction. And disclaimer for everybody who's going to watch this video, I don't support Donald Trump and I do not support Joe Biden, okay? This is not a biased situation where I'm going to denounce one person, support the other, or vice versa, okay? This is all objective, outside, neutral party opinions, okay? End of story. I will not be casting a vote for either of these goofballs. Now, at the end of the day, the presidential race is going to come down to these two goofballs. <laughs> no doubt about it. So, I mean, Joe Biden is the only guy on the ballot, I think, in a lot of states in the Democratic Party, which is, I guess he's the incumbent president, so... It makes sense, but it also doesn't make sense seeing as I'm pretty sure you could probably do the research yourself if you go back into all elections ever, regardless of political party, I think even the sitting president had people going up against him in the primaries for their party. But maybe I'm wrong. Either way, Trump is definitely dominating the Republican race. I think almost everybody's dropped out except the woman, Nikki Haley is her name. I don't know what state she's from, but she's definitely got big, big money, big weapons companies, sponsors. So that's the other thing. That's If you don't understand why I don't support any politician, I don't support either side, it's because they're all bought and paid for by the same people. End of story. I'm not going to sit here and say the Democrats are this or the Republicans that. They're all bought and paid for by the same people, okay? Every last one of them. You know, it's, it's truly a disgusting situation. So, I mean, we've been running for a little bit already. So, man, let's get right into this prediction. All right, here is what's going to happen in 2024. And timestamp, it's late January right now. All right, so I want to get this out one so when it happens you can come back and be like oh he totally knew it or hopefully i'm wrong honestly with the way i think it's gonna go hopefully i'm wrong you can come back to this video and talk about how wrong i was so we'll see but uh yeah i just this dialogue keeps going around in my head so i'm like man i should just make a video either way 2024 prediction so I'll follow up with the election details afterwards. What I believe is going to happen is that there will not be a presidential election. There's not going to be an election in the United States. It's not going to take place. Why? Because a series of disasters is going to unfold. Probably to the likes of a new disease that needs, you know vaccinations and all the good stuff combined with 
the imminent threat of World War III, perhaps even nuclear war. And probably a, a myriad of other issues is going to be brought to the forefront and the current administration, which would be Biden and friends, they will declare emergency powers and the United States of America will forego a presidential election and they will remain in seat, in power, and they will rise to the most powerful regime the country's ever seen. Whoa. <laughs> Pretty scary consideration, honestly. But uh, that's really what I think is going to happen. And I'll do my best to dive into you know, the details, right? So, number one reason why I believe that's going to happen. Why do I think no presidential election is going to happen? They're going to declare emergency powers and then they're going to rise into an authoritative, unipolar, globalist regime. I'll tell you reason number one that's going to happen is because Donald Trump is going to win the American election. <laughs> and I understand that is a triggering point for so many people in the country. But the fact of the matter is nobody is beating Donald Trump in a straight up election. Nobody. End of story. This guy has unbridled support in every single state. I mean, you can sit around, you know what I mean, if you're one of those people that the guy's name just makes your skin curl and who, whatever else. You know, you and your buddies could sit around and be like, oh, he's this and he's that. And you talk all this trash about him, but it's like, but if you actually go around the country and you look and you listen to people, he's got support everywhere. You know what I mean? And he, he doesn't just have support everywhere. He's the only person with support. He's the only person who has a voter base. He's the only person that can win an election. End of story. You know, this, the whole... The people who voted, for him in tw who voted for Joe Biden in 2020 were lying to themselves then. And if you're still talking about voting for Joe Biden in 2024, boy, let's get a GoFundMe going on for your therapy session because you need it. <laughs> it's, I mean, come on, man. Come on. You really gonna sit around and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. totally gonna vote for Joe Biden? Why? For what reason? And again, before you get emotionally triggered, you start coming at me, Trump or this, or the Trumpisms. And like, again, I don't support Donald Trump. Let me go into that real quick. I want you to understand, I don't support Donald Trump. And you could probably break it down into more refined reasons, but it's it's one reason across the board why I don't pledge my allegiance to Donald Trump. And it is because for nearly a decade now, I mean nearly a decade, ever since he has stepped foot on the political scene, a wedge, I mean just a huge wedge driven right through the middle of our country, you know? And there was no more, there was no more allowed to be like an understanding person about, oh, I could see things from your perspective, but what about this? You know, there was no more discourse. It was you either love him and you believe he's going to do great things for our country or you despise him with all your being. And should he rise to the Oval Office, freedom as we know it is destroyed. You know, and it's like, what? I mean, I think both of those schools of thought are pretty far-fetched. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, that's why I don't support the guy. It's just because there's just... And you could probably argue that it has a lot to do with the media coverage of him. You know, again, I'm not going to go... This isn't a video about Donald Trump. So I'm not going to get, like, sewn into the details around him. But, yeah, I, I don't support the guy because there's just so much division. You know, you mention the guy's name and people immediately, they're ready to, I mean, like, impale you hang you from a bridge in the name of democracy <laughs> and uh it's so it's it's pretty freaky it's pretty freaky so yeah I, I won't support the guy but the fact is he does have support 
You know, you cannot deny that. He has a voter base, a huge voter base. And when, as I've already said, I think he has the only voter base in the entire country. You know, ain't nobody out here flying a, a Biden flag. And if they are, it's because they've been programmed to despise Donald Trump, which is wild. You know what I mean? It's, it's a really, really wild thought that you can just vote for someone that you know is a joke just based on the principle that it's not somebody else. You know, so that's, you know, and we can get into that, but uh, yeah, let's dissect that a little bit. Because, I mean, even, even in 2020, even in 2020, you know, like, let, let's, because that's the thing. It's, it's not even just how people feel. This is also Team Biden's entire campaign. These guys' entire campaign, their entire predecessor, idea of why Biden needs to be in office and now why he needs to be reelected is because, well, I'm not Donald Trump. I'm not Donald Trump. It's like, uh, okay. Your crusty old lifetime politician is doing absolutely nothing for Americans. So why should we vote for you again? Oh, well, I'm not Donald Trump. <laughs> Whoa. Groundbreaking, mind-blowing, mind-blowing stuff. Get to the ballot boxes now, you know? <laughs> and in 2020, in 2020, you could sell people that garbage. You could. You could sell people that garbage because obviously, you know, the media had spent years making Donald Trump public enemy number one. And, and you could have spun this idea that, well, maybe Biden's team will do this and they'll do that. Even though everybody knew, we're I'm talking about back in 2020, everybody knew then that he was incompetent and incapable of running anything. Because that's, that's the thing, to me, that's the scariest part of this entire situation, is that everybody knows Joe Biden isn't making a single decision at all. You know what I mean? He, he's got like three responsibilities. And it's like, try not to mess up reading the teleprompter that bad. Try not to look like a complete Roomba on the stage getting off that thing. And then, you know, try not to touch kids while the camera's running. That's all he has to do. Everything else is taken care of for him. You know what I mean? It's the Oval Office, the place where the President of the United States sits, signs paperwork, changes everybody's lives, is now a glorified assisted living quarters. You know, like, what have we let this thing turn into? So, the fact that that is once again their go-to, it just, it just goes to show. That's, that's why I have this prediction, because it's like they know they can't beat Donald Trump. <laughs> There's no way. You know what I'm saying? And, and once again, I don't support the guy. I'm giving my objective, honest opinion. You know, do I think Joe Biden straight up won the 2020 election? <laughs> this is Joe Biden, the most voted for president in history? Yikes. <laughs> yeah, who believes that? You know, I get that you, there's so much just hysteria built up around this idea of hating Donald Trump, but I still don't think there's enough people that hate the guy to make Biden the most voted for president of all time. And that is the biggest kicker in this whole entire situation that people don't want to acknowledge. At the end of the day, right now, the current situation in the United States, in order to beat Donald Trump in a straight up election, you have to be the most voted for president ever. End of story, ever. You've got more votes than anybody that's ever lived to beat Donald Trump in a legitimate election. You know what I mean? So it's, and again, I'm not, I'm not here supporting this guy or saying this or that. I'm not going to vote for him, you know, but I think his voters are going to win the election, you know, because he has more of them than anybody. And that's, that's kind of the crazy part about this narrative that people are trying to spin. They've been spinning it for a long time. Well, if Donald Trump wins, it's, it's going to be the end of democracy. The end of democracy, everyone. 
Donald Trump, the end of democracy. You mean the guy with the most voters, they're all going to vote for him, and he's going to win the election, and then become the president, and that's the end of democracy? That actually sounds like what democracy is. <laughs> so that I don't make no sense to me. You know, I get that you don't like the guy, but at the end of the day, if he has the most votes and he wins, that's how democracy works. You know? On the flip side, you doing everything possible, you know, as far as creating diseases in Chinese labs and escalating foreign wars and you know all kinds of other dirty laundry that we don't need to unpack in an effort to what's the best way to say rig things in your favor make sure this guy doesn't win you know i mean they've got like an infinite amount of lawsuits on this guy right now which i'm sure it's all corruption but either way you know it's like they're pulling out all the stops just to try to beat this guy you know so it's like that that doesn't sound very democratic (laughs) you know and and here here's here's my question about donald trump you know this is the thing that i'm unsure of again i don't support him because of the amount of division in our country around the guy but the there's only one question for me about him is and it's like who is he actually you know because as I've said, my prediction, if you've already forgotten because you, you've become so emotionally built up, listen to me talk about the facts of the political landscape, is I don't think there's going to be an election. You know, they'll escalate global problems to the point that they're going to declare emergency powers. Donald Trump doesn't even get to run anymore, you know, and it's Lord Biden and friends, you know, controlling everything. That's what I really believe is going to happen. Right. Lost the camera for a second. So where we're at is the question surrounding Donald Trump. And in my mind, it's either he is in on it all. He's either in on this entire charade, you know, to the point that he's playing his part perfectly to a T. You know, he's been supposed to sow all this division and create all this hysteria to give the global powers a reason to consolidate power, control the United States, and rise into um, perhaps our worst nightmare. So it's either that, he's either in on it all, or the flip side, he actually is worst case scenario for global power. He actually is somebody who wants to put the United States of America first. And that's why they're willing to do any and everything to make sure he doesn't have a chance to become the president. You know, so that's that's my only question about the guy. I just don't really know what it is exactly he's about and what really motivates him, right? You know, cause hard telling. Now, how about the idea that if he wins, he's going to become the dictator? I've been hearing some of that lately, and I find that to be, I don't want to say hilarious, but doesn't sound very intelligent (laughs) you know a lot of the things people are saying about him is as if he has like some sort of massive armed force behind him or as if we haven't already experienced four years of this guy being president that's that's the other crazy thing to me they're like well he'll become the dictator it's like he was the president for four years why didn't he become the dictator then? You know, that didn't make no sense. And you know, and again, the whole the whole Biden scenario of like, well, I'm not Donald Trump. It's like, yeah, that that entire campaign point worked for you a little bit when you were running against an incumbent president, and you could spin all sorts of lies about what you would do. But it's like, you are the sitting president now, my guy. And you're going to say you have to elect me because the guy running against me is super evil? It's like, what have you done in the last three years? <laughs> you know, like, really? Let's honestly look at that for what it is. You know, I, you know, I don't think I need to paint a picture for how different the times were. Think about how different life was from 2016 
2020 versus 2020 to 2024. Feels like completely different universes. I feel like we we jumped through one of those freaking Rick and Morty portals, and I'm like, where are we, dude? What's going on here? This is freaky. You know, look at that Morty. <laughs> what what the hell is that? This is fucking weird, man. <laughs> it's so weird. But uh, yeah, man, let's, let's unpack some of that. So we got to go into the details so much, the nitty gritty. But here's a top three. Here's a top three list of what Lord Biden and friends have accomplished in just the last three years. Okay? So, one, they have managed to print almost 50% of the American dollars in circulation today. Yep, yep. Go ahead, pause this video, go to whatever search engine you use, and fact check that bad boy. I wish I was lying, okay? They have managed to print almost 50% of the American dollars in circulation, okay? That's why inflation is happening. You know, and I, ooh, we get too deep into the economy situation because get, it not only get the people watching fired up, it gets me fired up, all right? You know, and that's, it's an issue. It's like, so people don't understand. The things you're buying, you know, the marketplace, stuff isn't becoming more expensive. Your buying power and your currency is becoming devalued. You're having your buying power stolen right out from underneath you because they keep printing money out of thin air. You know? It's, it's unbelievable. And then, and then they've got people on their payroll with the audacity to go out on these major news networks and say that the American people just don't understand. The American people aren't grateful for how good the economy actually is. What? You know what I mean? It's like, maybe not a full-on stoning, but they should at least be tied to a post and punched in the face. What? You gonna, you gonna tell the American people outright that they just don't understand the economy's actually good? Maybe, uh, how about you go to the grocery store? All right, buy some milk, bread, have a dozen eggs, and then take yourself on down to the gas station, fill up, man, see how that's working out for us. You know, it's the audacity. It's just disgusting, you know what I mean? That's, that's what people understand. It's like these people in power, these people in the federal offices, they think you're, they think you're unintelligent, they think you're dumb, and they think they're better than you. you know what I mean, and it's time that we're tired of it. And so I'm, I'm not going to get too deep in that. And so we're on this list, right? What has Lord Biden and friends accomplished? Okay, one, they've printed 50%, nearly 50% of the American dollars in circulation. And just in the past few years. So we haven't even seen the long-term effect of how bad that's going to punch us in the balls. Number two, in the last three years, we've had nearly 10 million, count them, almost 10 million people come across the southern border unprocessed. Whoa! Yeah, and I think the, the accurate figure is like just around or maybe a little bit above 9 million, but it's closer to 10 million than anything else. You know, like what? 10 million people just waltzing into our country like, hey, hola, senor, what's up? We're here to do what exactly? That's what I don't really understand. You know? And I'm sure there's going to be people, oh my God, they're migrants. This country is built on immigration. Well, it's not 1750, my dude. It's 2024. All right, and we've worked really hard to build this country, and we're not against immigration. There is a process to immigrate in this country. You're not supposed to just be able to walk in. For me, that doesn't understand why is because we all contribute to the country, right? First of all, taxes suck, and we should definitely do something about it. But at the end of the day, you, me, everybody, we either own a business or we work for a business, and all that money we make that we earn is then taxed and we pay the taxes and then you know the powers that be 
use the taxes to benefit us, yeah, instead of lining their own pockets, I'm sure. But that's essentially what we're doing, right? What exactly can undocumented people do to contribute? You know what I'm saying? I don't care if there's a migrant mowing your grass or putting shingles on your roof for next to nothing. That's a personal perk. That's not doing something for our civilization or American society at large. All right, that's not count. You know, and a lot of the people, you know, the people who would consider themselves, you know, a Biden supporter, uh, they have nothing but great things to say about migrants coming into the country. Open borders. Oh, yeah, let everybody in whenever they want. It's a party here in America. You're all invited. Okay. Those would also be people that I would bet would have negative things to say about the United States. Oh, America's like this, blah, 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 blah. You know, lots of negative points about our country. But the fact that you think and believe that we could let an endless train of immigrants just roll into our country unprocessed, undocumented, and it will have zero negative effect, that makes you a bigger patriot than any redneck you've ever met in your entire life. Without question. If you really think tens of millions of immigrants can just walk into our country, be shipped to cities and wherever the hell else, and it not have a negative impact on our country, you are a true patriot, my friend. You truly believe in American greatness because you think nothing can collapse us. That's impressive. Because that's, you know, on the side note of contributing to society, that's what other people need to understand. These immigrants aren't just walking in and doing whatever. They're getting subsidized. They're getting checks. I'm not sure if people know that. Yeah, any man that shows up with like a woman and a child to support, they're getting uh, what, like a stimulus check. They're getting like $2,200 a month. They're getting taxpayer money for walking into our country. That's why they're coming here. Because taxpayers are paying for it. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. So there, there's big accomplishment number two that the Biden regime has you know, successfully completed. 10 million immigrants in three years. Unprocessed, unchecked, just let them in. It's a siesta, fiesta, quinceanera. Gotta love it. Party in America, as uh, Miley Cyrus would say. So, point number three. What's the third accomplishment Biden and friends have done? Mmm. This one's my favorite, actually. So, wow, it's almost hard to churn out. In the past three years, the people of Congress have outperformed the S&P 500 in the stock market. Now, if that generates a question mark for you, what does that mean? What I'm saying is the Congress people, the senators and the representatives, they are outperforming Wall Street at their own game. Red flag, anybody. That's unbelievable. That's unbridled corruption. Well, you know what I mean? Because again, they're going to come out and tell you that the economy is actually pretty sweet. It's like, oh, yeah, the economy is actually great if you're a corrupt politician. You're doing amazing if you're one of those. Oh, yeah, but if you're like an everyday American working at your job or running your business, it's actually pretty horrible. Imagine that. So, yeah. Unpack that, man. Last three years, the Congress people are winning on the stock market. And if you have a hard time understanding how that works, it's simple. You're out here passing legislation that's then going to help huge business interests. So what do you do before you know that this legislation is going to come on your table and get your signature? Well, you take your money and then you invest it and then you pass the law, and then we pay with tax money, whoever that big business interest is, and then they have their investment in that big business interest that then pays them back because they put money into it already. What's real life example? Hmm, well, democracy for Ukraine, 
obviously we got to help those poor downtrodden people over there in Eastern Europe from that evil dictator, Vladimir Putin. So what do we do? Oh, well, we're just going to sign an $800 billion deal to fund their war. No big deal. It's for freedom and democracy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So surely, surely the representatives and the sinners, they're not going to take all their money and put them in Eurathion, Northrop Grumman, you know, and all those awesome weapons manufacturing companies that are going to get the contracts. Oh, no, they did. That's exactly what they did, actually. And then they passed almost a trillion dollar deal, which we're talking about democracy. I didn't vote on that. I don't know if anybody else voted on that. I definitely was trying to raise my hand like, hey, uh, no. Actually, how about we don't spend $800 billion on a war in Eastern Europe that is not winnable, okay? So, but they did it anyway. Why did they do it? Because they got super rich doing it. That is exactly why they did it. And, and that's the way the stock market thing is working, you know? They know what's going to happen, so they invest their money when they know a big company's going to get a payday from us, the taxpayers, and then they get a kickback. And then, of course, I'm sure they get under-the-table money from these companies saying, thanks, you know? It's like, and again, we put the point in that your political party allegiance is irrelevant. Because I'm sure it seems a lot like I'm kind of going in on Democrats or whatever, but I see no difference. Because the Ukraine situation is disgusting. It's truly disgusting. You know, people can say whatever they want, but there was all kinds of diplomatic solutions there. There really is. It's, uh, obviously, we need war because they're making money off war. And uh, I'll bust the balls of a Republican. Yeah, I think the guy, he's a senator, maybe a rep from South Carolina. Disgusting human being. Vile person. His name's Lindsey Graham. I guarantee you find this clip. Recently, they were... They asked him about all that money we spent for that conflict, and he looked these reporters dead in the face, spoke right into the microphone, and said, that's the best money we ever spent. You know, with his disgusting little, not that I don't think his, I don't think Southern twangs are bad, but his is definitely disgusting. And, you know what I mean, once again, he might need to be publicly stoned, but he at least needs to be publicly punched in the face. You know, the best money we've ever spent? Yeah, because he got rich. You know, it's just crazy, man. It's crazy. And those poor Ukrainian people, really. Everybody has to leave their country. And then, you know, what's worse, all the Ukrainian men my age, younger, anywhere around, you know, the young adult male, those guys are all dead. They're all dead. You know, and I'm sure you're getting stories about how they blew up this or they did that or no they're they're all dead they're all dead and that's where you need to know that world war three is on the horizon because in the united kingdom in england great britain whatever they call themselves over there you've got their politicians they're about to start conscripting englishmen and anybody who doesn't understand that term that's that's would be the english version of a draft they're gonna start conscripting all the males and they're gonna start sending y'all to go fight in ukraine Oh yeah, you're up next because all the Ukrainians are dead. Because that was not a war they could ever win. It was just a way for politicians to get dirt, nasty, rich. So, let's recap. What has Biden accomplished? Mm, So we've got 10 million immigrants coming across the border in the last three years, printing almost half of the American dollars in circulation, and of course, all of Congress is outperforming Wall Street on the stock market. And that's legit. I mean, I'm not going to give these guys free advertising or anything, but there's young guys around my age who have developed apps for trading on the stock market. And the entire premise, the way their algorithm works is all they do is they they have you make the same exact trades that Congress people are making and they, they perform, they, do, they work really, really well, you know? So if, that should tell you everything you need to know. It should tell you everything you need to know, you know? So uh, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's really, really madness out here. And 
you know, through those facts, once again, you know, Biden doesn't have a chance. He does not have a chance in the election. You know what I mean? Uh, everybody knows it. The people who are afraid of Donald Trump know it. The people who detest him know it. And the people who love him know it. You know, because here's, here's the thing. This is why I get to roast Donald Trump and why I can roast his supporters and all, you know, everything in between. You know what I mean? Because I don't support Joe Biden. Better yet, I don't support the people that control the Joe Biden regime. I mean, Joe Biden's just... Go to any old people home. There's Joe Biden's everywhere. There's Joe Biden's everywhere. So it's really, you know, people... You know, metaphor used a lot, pulling his strings, pulling his team strings. So that's the situation in the White House. But uh, what I'm saying is I get to make fun of Donald Trump. I get to make fun of the people that support him because I don't support Joe Biden. You know what I mean? If you're out here, you despise Donald Trump. You don't get to say nothing about Donald Trump or the people that vote for him if you vote for Joe Biden. End of story. You know what I mean? If you're out here voting for Joe Biden, hating on Donald Trump, you're a hypocrite and a fool. End of story. End of story. You don't gotta vote for Donald Trump. I'm not going to. Vote for Joe Biden? What? Nah. You got me messed up, player. <laughs> no way. Because people don't understand this is history right now. History is happening. I get this happening every single day, but this is the crossroads of destiny in this country, man. And I will not go down in history as somebody that voted for Joe Biden. There's no way won't do it ever you know and uh and that's what i think really comes down to the kicker of the situation because donald trump's gonna win donald trump will win the election you know there, there's no question about it and that's what i don't understand why people are so angry about it because he has supporters you know he has legitimate supporters you know like you could at least here's the thing you can say about you can say all kinds of things, you know, with like this negative opinion about the people that do support him. Oh, well, they're like this and they're that and they're ignorant. And it's like, well, I think I already just explained that if you're hating on Trump and his supporters and you're out here voting Joe Biden, you're ignorant as hell. So it is what it is. But the thing about Trump supporters, right or wrong is irrelevant. They believe in him. You know, they believe in this guy. They believe that he's going to do good things for the country. They believe he's going to do good things for them. You know, and at the end of the day, that's why he has an unbelievable amount of support nationwide. You know what I mean? People say whatever they want. This guy has the most passionate voter base in every single state. No question about it. Even the most hippy dippy areas you could imagine i guarantee this guy's got a huge voter base in california and i guarantee he's got a huge voter base in new york you know what i mean he's got voters everywhere and they believe in him you know i mean they believe he's going to do good things for the country they believe he's going to do good things for the everyday american now is that true i can't tell you yes or no is that right i don't know you know what i mean i don't know what he's going to do i don't know what him being the president is going to do for people but on the flip side, the people that are going to vote for Joe Biden, they know nothing good is going to happen for them. You know, everybody who vote for Joe Biden knows that he's not going to do anything for you. He's not going to do anything good for the United States. I mean, just look at the last few years. He's not going to do anything good for the everyday American. You know, and I, and I, I hate to, again, I hate to go at him as an individual because he's, He's not at fault, right? He's just a puppet. So it's, it's, it's the powers that be that are controlling him and his regime and that entire administration. So, you know, and, and that's the other thing. It's like, well, at least with Donald Trump, this guy's making the decisions. At least, you know, if we get fed up, we know who to say, hey, we can all march to the White House and so you're fired. You know, we can give him a taste of his own medicine, right? Fired, Trump. You know, but it's like with Biden, it's like, what do you do? Who's actually in charge here? Who's calling the shots? Because we know it's not this guy. You know, get him another ice cream cone. Send him back to his room. We want to talk to who's really in charge. You know, it, it's, it's crazy. It's so crazy. So that, that's, you know what I mean? That, that's the shining point, I think, in the difference between the voter bases. 
You can say what you want about people personally. You can attack people personally all you want. You know what I mean? If you're that low. But at the end of the day, the people who support Donald Trump believe in Donald Trump. I mean, but the people who are going to vote for Joe Biden, they don't believe in Joe Biden. They don't believe in that regime. They don't believe in that administration. They know it spells nothing but doom for our country. But they've been so programmed with hatred and fear that they'll do anything their TV tells them to do. Donald Trump can't become the president. Vote for Joe Biden. He'll become the dictator. Oh, no. You know, it's, it's, it's just wild. It's just so wild. You know, and I thought it was a lot more of the youth. You know, I was like, maybe it's just, it's, you know, people my age and younger, like just so uneducated, so misinformed. And obviously there's plenty of that because young people, they think they know a lot more than they really do. You know, but uh, actually what I've come to see is that it's actually a lot of, uh, I don't want to categorize people by their generation because that's becoming kind of a fad. But uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of the, the, the older folks, right? The people who are close to or now in like the senior citizen range. They're, they're usually their entire political ideals are defined by TV. You know what I mean? And I don't care what it is. Fox News, MSNBC, CNN. It's, it's all a crock of trash. And they're lying to you every second of every hour of every day. Nothing they say is the truth. Only what they want you to believe is what's coming out of those programs. And the reason that there's just hysteria and hatred around the idea of Donald Trump is because they know that if they can fill you full of hatred, that they can get you to do, say, believe anything. You know what I mean? And, and that's, that's the power in it. And that's a scary notion. It really is. As I mean, it's, it's crazy because I think they're disgusting. They're detestable, I mean, subhumans, really. But at the end of the day, the mind game they're playing, it is impressive. It is impressive what they've been able to accomplish just by making people think a certain thing. You know, because it's the way it looks to me as an objective observer is that what the media is doing is it's all this scare tactic of like well this is what donald trump is going to do and this is what's going to happen if donald trump gets elected and so they're spinning you full of fear and and that turns into anger and hatred and then they're weaponizing that by using those emotions to then put you in a place of allowing them to do whatever they want so then it becomes they're going to do the things they say Donald Trump is going to do to save you from Donald Trump doing it. Tracking? Right? Like these people are about to cancel the presidential election and rise to supreme power to save you from Donald Trump being a supreme ruler. And that, that's going to be the story. I'm telling you, you heard it here first. It's, and I, tell, I hope I'm wrong, man. I really do. Hope I'm wrong. But the way I see it, this is the way the cookie's going to crumble. So we'll see. You know, let's get some discourse going on. I've never asked for like comments before, but man, drop into the comment section. Say what you think is going to happen. Give your opinion on all my crazy points. Uh, maybe say your prediction. And let's see how long we can make it like a, an intellectual discourse. Let's see how long it takes before it turn before it descends into like hateful comments about you personally. <laughs> That's usually what it does. The internet is strange like that. But uh, either way, man, you know, we're all still people. We're all Americans, and I'm with you. you know what I mean, that's what I'm saying. I'm not with Trump. I'm not with Biden. I'm with the Americans. I'm with the American people. I support you. I support all of us. I support our future as free people. End of story. It's all that matters to me. Okay? So keep the love. Keep the peace. Vibes high. Catch you in the next video, man. Much love.